I want to talk about mask because it seems to me that a puppet's head, a marionette's head, and a mask have similarities, do they not? They have a root that's common, that an inanimate represents something. The marionette, which is a mask, but animated from here and not from here, these are the same lineage, are they not? I, I think, yes. This is a discussion I have with a puppeteer friend of mine who is mime trained. That's how he came to puppetry. And so it is always a discussion of the mask. And I, 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 one time a few years ago I said, I love that you call it the mask. And he said, well, what do you call it? And I said, the head. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because that's just my training, right? Every puppet book talks about the head and sculpting the head. But I get the mask reference because it is, you know, something that the performer puts on. I, the reason I've always been attracted to marionettes, and more and more so as time goes on, is that it gives me the full body of the puppet. Where, you know, I started doing hand puppets, and I love that. It's really rustic. You're in there. So hand puppets can pick up an object. They can embrace. They can hit. They can fight. They can dance, you know. And it's really about the performer being inside the thing, which is more mask-like. A marionette is is the cool pretty girl at the party, you know? She's more detached because it's on strings and, and, and you're working through strings. It's delayed and it's not immediate like a hand puppet or even a, a moving mouth TV puppet where the performer is inside of there. Uh, for me, the mask of the marionette is the whole body. It's like when we were talking about building it. So I get to build in the whole characteristic posture on the entire instrument, not just mm -hmm. this part. Um, but I, I, so to take what you said, I would say this whole thing is my mask, not just right. not just this part. Right, it's the whole thing that allows me inside. Because part of the reason I bring the subject up is that when we tell stories that are at a remove, so to speak. Mm -hmm something happens, there is something else accessed. When you, you and marionettes, we know that it's at a remove. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, we know that we're embracing a metaphor mm -hmm. in which there's magic. I actually, I, I know what that is. I know, I know what you're talking about because like I uh, alluded to earlier, these things exist only to be these things and they are things. Um, and we all know they're things, that's pretty obvious. And I can always feel in the first five to ten minutes of the show, the newbies in the audience going, oh, and he holds those things, <laughs> and his mouth is moving. Okay, and that, yeah, okay, he's, okay, and he's, mm. And then I can feel when they go in the show. I can honestly feel this thing happen in the room where I'm not being stared at anymore, and they're in the story. So means hopefully you have a good story to tell or otherwise they just keep looking at the big guy up top. But the other thing that happens and this is that alchemy of the theater. This is why we keep doing it. And I'm a vampire for strangers in darkened theaters every night. This is why I show up to work because I can say these words I've written and I can make the voices and I can jiggle them around and I can make them do things that are clever or or poetic or whatever happens, but that ain't the whole show. The whole show is when these people sitting there in the dark put the rest of the life into the character. And what that is, is frame of reference. And that's what's taken me years to learn. I used to tell everybody everything in these shows. Here's what it is. Here's every emotion. I'm going to show you all these. People who come into the theater have put on their coats and shoes and laid money down at the box office to watch a puppet show. They're my best friends on the planet. They're not my enemies at all. And they come in with the knowledge of the world of heartache, of joy, of loss, of romance, of jealousy. They come with all of those things. So if a character is enacting something that strikes them emotionally, they fill in the blanks. And I think that's what happened with um, Hugo and Inez's nose character on the knee for you. They, they were um, using a very sparse canvas and they put a nose on a knee 
and you filled in the rest from your own emotional treasure trove that you brought in the theater. And that's what makes theater magical. You are describing what for me is the ultimate act of theater is that they participate in it. Mm -hmm. They don't consume it. They're not to receive a product to be told what to feel, as you say when you start it. They actually come up on stage in a way and they participate and their power of coming up on stage, either in Penny Plain's room or in the theater in No Great Mischief or in the forest, their power of participating in that story takes these rooms to very strange and wonderful places. And you know, I try and tell younger performers uh, that a lot, of, a lot of it is still technical and, and that's not meant to uh, debase it. But I learned, I, I've learned everything I know on stage because I've been able to do it a long time. Um, so I didn't go to the Puppet Academy in Stad for 12 years. I just started touring Alberta when I was 14, you know, so you figure it out on the road. But I remember years and years ago doing a Theatre of Marionette show where I really wanted them to listen. And they were at a Saturday night pitch or whatever they were at, you know, they bring it into the room. And, and I remember I just started whispering the scene. And it calmed down. I didn't have to yell. I started whispering and they leaned forward. And what I learned over time was if a character, if a character is about to reveal something and it's very intimate and you do all of that on one breath and you hold it on that one breath and they say, and then I did this. The audience starts holding their breath and on the moment of the reveal, everyone exhales and for a small moment in time, they all inhale and they start breathing together in the audience. And suddenly they're breathing with that character or for that character. That's not magic, that's technique. You can actually make people hold their breath and then start breathing. It doesn't stay that way for the rest of the show. Right. But in that moment, they submit to what's going on stage and participate, like you say. And I love that. I love that I've had enough time on stage to figure that out. And that's just technique. Wow. And it's technique that makes it magical. Because we all start listening and breathing together. 